Greetings, everybody. We're about to depart on another diving adventure, and I'm gonna do a live stream just to say hi because it's been a couple of days, and uh, this is a uh, kind of a larger dive boat than they have at in uh, Ogasawara. Usually there's, um, uh, the boats are a little bit small, especially for snorkeling, but yeah, it's, it's about average. And, the, and the, the company we're going with is, is Fisheye. You can see down here. There's a logo in reverse. Today we have pretty much a full boat and we're gonna be going three dives today. Uh, I'm ready for this. It's gonna be a long day. We'll probably be back. We're departing at 8.40 and we'll be back around three o'clock. And I'm gonna do another live stream uh, which, uh, at the Shark Burger restaurant, which can be pretty cool. Uh, so today's gonna be a lot of fun. I just wanted to show you, show you the ocean. There's another dive boat on, on the way out. That one's really full, but you can see all of the tanks on this on the sides of the boat, BCDs and regulators also attached to the tanks. Thank you for the uh, chest hair compliments. Nothing I can do about it. I'm not a wax kind of guy, <laughs> you know what I mean. But I, a couple of things I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to take you down. I know the the shadow the, the shadow is pretty bad, but. Um, uh, the, the thing with diving here is that it's a little bit pricier than uh, Japan's a little bit pricier than Thailand, like like three or five hundred percent more. But it's worth it. The average dive is about um, seven thousand yen or sixty-five to seventy dollars here. But I mean, a lot of the resources are coming from quite far away, and this is the thing with with diving uh, in all remote locations. Thailand and Honduras were two of the cheapest places that I ever went diving. And as a dive master, usually a paddy dive master, you usually get a 10% discount on top of it because we are dive masters and we know what we're doing supposedly. Although a lot of dive masters aren't practicing dive masters, they, they still might get the discount. Um, I guess it just depends if you're registered or not. I haven't been registered in 15 years. Um, the, the thing with the sea here is that you can see behind me, it's just so blue. Never mind looking at me with the backlit shadow. Just look at the sea out there. It's just incredibly blue. And this is the inner harbor, but there's an original color here called Bonin Blue. All right, Bonin Blue. And Bonin is the Bonin Islands is the name of these islands here. Bonin Blue is this really deep sea blue. Even in the deepest parts, usually where it's like black in the Atlantic Ocean and some parts of the Pacific, it is like this really spectacular blue color. And uh, it's, it's very hard to describe it. You just have to see it and I think you've been able to you'll be able to see it in the drone shots I'm gonna be taking today, but you're not gonna see the drone shots until I put up the video later on uh, But you can see in the harbor. This is shallower water This is shallower water and you can see just how beautiful it is. let me put the wide lens on this side There you go. So you get a, a wider view It's just absolutely stunning and uh, all around it, outside of the town, it's pristine nature. I really love that. I'm gonna go down now and show you the dive boat. Look at that, there's another, oh, that dive boat, there's a dive site just over here. That's where we saw a couple of reef sharks and I believe there's a wreck, a uh, sunken ship from World War II on the side there, which is pretty, pretty gnarly. That's with, gnarly with a G. And there's the captain. Let's see if we can get a hello from him. Good morning. Ah, we're going to Minamijima. Hi, Hi. 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 It's the captain. He says we're going to Minamijima, which is the South Island, which is a protected area. So it's going to be absolutely beautiful and stunning. But I cannot use my drone there because it's a protected area. And I'm going to go down below and show you some of the dive boat. Down the hatch. <laughs> Today we have a lot of university students. <laughs> yeah, and uh, this is where the diving all takes place from the from the surface. This is where we jump in. I'm gonna show you some of the tanks. I'll show you my rig here. Hi, Ozaimas. <laughs> so I've rented all this equipment. It's all pretty good stuff. Um, it's good enough for me. Does the BCD now? Now we set this up the day before and I, I don't like doing that so usually you have 200 bars I only have wait 160 that's not right I'm gonna have to get a new tank 
I hate it when we, we, we set up tanks a day before because we lose oxygen because these are old BCDs and they leak a little bit, just enough where the tanks are, are not good. There's a whistle, this is the BCD, this is the BCD and this is the regulator. The regulator, if you're not, if you're not sure with diving, this is everything. This is attached to the tank and this is where the oxygen comes from the tank through the tubes. Um, this is, this is, um, this BCD here, well let me see here, oh right here it is. Everyone's different, right? If you push this, it will inflate, you see? And if you push this, it releases the oxygen, so you always have a, a vest that you can control your buoyancy a little bit. But we also have weight belts to keep you down. Yeah. Here's my fins. Didn't you close the valve yesterday? I closed the valves, but somebody opened it. I don't know. The other thing that I, I'm not really like is that the, the dive master will do a lot of things for you. Uh, and that's like omotenashi, it's a Japanese service. But I like to do it myself so I know what's going on. I like to turn the valve, I like to set it up myself. And that's something that's something annoying with diving in Japan, but you know, you take the good with the bad, you smile and then you just do it again. That's what I have to do. Um, most people rent their equipment here, but some people, if you live in Tokyo, they bring it with them. They bring it with them. I, I got equipment back, back in Tokyo, but I have so much camera gear, it's, it's just better just to rent the equipment because uh, then I don't have to carry it. So the wind noise is probably gonna start to get bad, but you can see um, we're really, surrounded by beautiful waters already we're getting closer to um, closer to the Pacific outside of the harbor once you get out of the harbor the waves start so far the the sea is very calm the water temperature is 28 degrees Celsius which is like 87 degrees Fahrenheit I think it's 86 degrees it's really warm it's almost like bath water it's absolutely um, too hot for full wetsuits. And that's what I, I'm, I'm wearing a full wetsuit, 5.5 millimeters, which is ridiculously, it's too much. But the thing, the reason why the bigger wetsuits are, are better is because uh, we're going to some wrecks, some sunken ships, and you have more protection so you don't get scratched if you go across metal. Let the wetsuit do all that work take the scratches and uh, I'll take the healthy skin afterwards <laughs> it's a, but it is a little bit hot it does feel a little bit hot um, most dives are about 30 to 45 minutes I guess around the 35 minute is seems to be the average here this is my this is gonna be my ninth dive on the island so uh, 9 10 and 11 we're doing three dives today yeah so it is it is a really beautiful area now you're starting to see that we're, we're getting deeper and the water is turning the bone in blue a little bit. I don't know if you could pick that up in the in the live stream, but you can see just how deep blue on the side here. It's definitely, and sometimes you can see the blue mixed in with the white as, as the boat cuts through it. It's really, really beautiful. And you don't see that when you're swimming and when you're uh, taking the boat through Tokyo Harbor. There's just too much pollution there. Here the water is, is alive. It really is alive here. Now that's why. All right, so we got free coffee. You can take a mug, and uh, usually dive boats will have. The Japanese dive boats have, have uh, water and and mugi cha or tea. So you can take either tea or water, which is pretty cool. These are my bags. There's my camera bag. There's my live streaming camera bag, and then underneath here is my drone. So we're gonna do some drone shots today. And this is the um, uh, inside of the boat where you can sit and, and throw up if you need to, <laughs> or something, I don't know. But this is the toilet, and the toilet's pretty clean here. There's some coffee that you can help yourself with. Dozo, dozo. All right, so I'm gonna take you up upstairs again. It's gonna get a little windy, I apologize, but I wanna tell you, tell you a little bit more about the drone laws here. One of the reasons, 
Uh, I better go up. One of the reasons that I'm, uh, I'm diving an extra day is because the, the drone laws here are very, very strict. And the reason why, and a lot of people have been asking me, is because uh, this area of Tokyo is protected. It's a World Heritage Site, uh, and they really want to protect the, marine, the uh, marine life. But it's also a breeding ground for turtles and birds. And they don't want the drone to interfere with the mating of the birds. Now, it, it, a lot of people probably are not going to understand that, but I think it's sort of the same blanket rule that you have with tattoos and onsens, okay? It kind of makes sense. If you ban it for everybody, then there's no problem whatsoever. If you allow people to, to use it a little bit, then they just go crazy. And this is just a, a way to make sure that the, the, uh, the, the island remains kind of flight free for most people. Um, now the shortcut is that you can launch drones from, from the boat. You can launch from the boat, you can't launch from, the, from land. So if you launch from land, you're breaking the law. If you launch from the boat, then you're following the law, but you cannot encroach on um, the breeding grounds. So uh, there's a line, and I'm gonna fly my drone today in the uh, prohib and the uh, not the prohibited areas. I'm gonna fly my drone in the allowed areas, the legal areas, but I'll be able to get a view down into the breeding grounds a little bit um, because it's 4K. I'll be exporting into HD, so I get a little bit of a zoom. It should be good, but I, I think if you do come to Ogasawara and you're going to fly your drone. Please keep in mind that you could get in big trouble because they will report you. Now, Ogasawara had a chance to have an airport, okay? Let me, I know it is pretty bizarre. Kendra's talking about the, the tattoos. It's bizarre for Westerners, but even for, but for Japanese, it kind of makes sense because then it, it keeps the gangsters out, but it also keeps up people with tattoos who are not gangsters. So you have to look at it that way. They, they don't want any drones uh, off of the land because it keeps people from flying drones who are inexperienced pilots and keeping it, the island quiet. But it also keeps like people like me from flying drones. <laughs> you know. But I get you got to find a shortcut. Like fly, do it off of a boat. Do it off of a boat. Um, so another thing I want to tell you with 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 uh, the drones is that uh, um, diving is really cool. You get great underwater shots, but it's also a way for you to to fly the drone. The thing is that you have to catch the drone, meaning you can't let it land on the boat, you have to hand catch it. And that's been pretty scary because the Mavic Pro does not have big legs to catch. <laughs> it's a little bit nerve wracking, but I get by. I know my drone quite well. In the end, in the end, I, I've had some stunning shots of the island and it's been very, very incredible. Um, I can't wait to edit this video for you. All right, now we're getting out to sea. Oh, oh yeah, so the, the um, locals here had a chance to have an airport and they turned it down because the airport would bring more people and more chances to spoil what's there, the nature. It's just they didn't want to turn it into a tourist attraction. They wanted to keep it as a nature preserve and I really respect that and that's what makes it such a beautiful and attractive island. But at the same time, a lot of you are going to be like, I don't have, I don't have one week to, to travel for two full days. It takes what? Yeah, two full days to travel here. It's not only your flight to Japan, but you also have, it's not just your flight to Japan, but you also have another 24 hours on the ferry to get here. So for most tourists, it's like, yeah, no, I'm gonna pass. But I'm gonna tell you something. They call this the Galapagos of, they call this the Galapagos of uh, the East. And it's it's just too beautiful. It, it really is worth the trip. Ah, you can see now straight ahead, you see that beach? We're coming up to a beach. It's super, super beautiful. Just imagine lounging on that. There's nobody there. You can hike there. It takes you about three, four hours to hike there. And then you have the whole beach to yourself. This is what I'm talking about. It's so beautiful. I see somebody let Peter in here. Somebody let Gretchen in. Whoa. How you doing, Gretchen? I see Jason's here. Hi, Jason. Ramsland, Kendra, Firecracker, Diver, Linda, Tsuyotaku. Hey, guys, Yorkshire. Nice to see everybody here. OCD Steak. All right. Mike Gallon's here. Great to see you guys. Do click the like button if you like these kind of contents. I might stream one more time from the sea. I like it when you like it. <laughs> Me likey what you likey. Look at that beach. Seriously. 
I just want to jump in the water and swim to the beach and say, come get me later. But I got some diving to do. Alright, I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go down here for a little bit. Um, so the wind might not be as bad. The wind might not be as bad from here, okay? Sorry about the shadow, guys. So uh, I'm here for another uh, four... Wait, today's the 8th, 9, 10, 11, 12. I, I, I leave on the 12th and I come back to Tokyo on the 13th. Um, I still got a lot more shooting to do. The diving part of it be done today, which is really cool. And then I got to finish the island's history and uh, meet some more local people. Hold on a second. Uh, there we go. I have to meet some local people and, and get some interviews. But you're pretty good. Uh, I am Patty certified. I have a dive master's license. I've been diving since 2003. Yeah, 2002. My first dive was in the Maldives, which is like amazing. Uh, but this is like a very, very close second to the Maldives. Or maybe it's, I don't know. But I also dived in the Galapagos and I dived in uh, uh, Easter Island. So I, I'd say this is pretty, but this is up there in the top five by, by far. Easter Island was cool because they had the Moai under the water. Because the crazy, the crazy clerics from Europe, when they came to Easter Island, they saw the Moai and said, how dare they worship these idols? And they pushed a lot of the Moai into the sea. And uh, that, that created an amazing dive site where you're just diving around Moai, which is just like, like mind-blowing to see under the sea. Ah, uh, hey Cassie, thank you. You got it, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna use that for my shark burger for lunch. I'm gonna try to do a live stream at around 3 p.m. Japan time, between 3 and 4 p.m. Japan time, so check it out. That's gonna be at the shark burger place maybe slightly controversial but sharks are no friends of mine and apparently um, they don't use a lot of shark meat because I ate it before I guess you could call that echo eco echo I don't know um, I'm gonna wait till the boat stops and I'm gonna show you just a little bit of the uh, a little bit of the sea before I gotta suit up and get out of here okay it's pretty it's pretty cool so I apologize for the wind if there's a wind noise I'm gonna set up my wetsuit now, okay? I feel like Aquaman. Yeah, if you, if you have you guys ever worn a wetsuit and like it makes you feel like a superhero, sort of. <laughs> it makes you feel powerful. So that's why I think superheroes they have uh, uniforms that look like wetsuits. There might be a reason why. Wetsuits, full body wetsuits, make you feel like like superheroes. I don't know why. I think it's because it takes all your muscle and smashes them down. I don't know. Wow, all right. Now we're getting closer to um, Minamijima and the signal might die out, I apologize. There's John's Beach, named after me. Or another John. I'm guessing another John. This is where, if you look at an Instagram post, I'll uh, thank you, Gretchen, I appreciate that, I will. We'll eat, I'll eat you something fishy, how about that? This is where I took the video from Instagram. If you take a look at that three days ago, some stunning blue tropical looking water. Go take a look at Instagram. Uh, Only in Japan TV is the Instagram handle and you're gonna really love that video. Hey, he's watching with the grandbaby. Hey Faye, congratulations grandma. All right. Wow. I just, I don't have words so much. Maybe Peter would say it better. Welcome to a tropical island of paradise where the waters are blue 
and bluer and even bluer than that. I can't, I can't do it. But over there you can see where it's got that very clear, like tropical, like water. And then the beach on the right side, on the left side of the screen. And over there is the protected area. That's, I think, where we're going towards. The temperature is about 30 degrees Celsius, 31 degrees Celsius. It's a lot cooler than it was last month, but it's still warm. We got beautiful weather, very little wind because a typhoon passed, and that means it, it kind of settles down. There's a high pressure system nearby, so uh, while, while Tokyo had storms, we had sun. That's up because we're a thousand kilometers or like 600 miles away from Tokyo. All right, we're gonna start getting ready. We're gonna start getting ready. Wow! Wow, okay, I'm gonna put the wide angle lens on this side. Wow, I, I can't believe it. you guys can still see this. This is, this is just amazing. Wow, look at this water. You can see down to the bottom. This is why I'm here. It's almost surreal to be here. <laughs> it's like, what am I doing here? How did I get here? Oh, and then I remember the ferry ride. You kind of earn it when you get here. This is your reward. Seriously, you can see down to the bottom. I don't know if it might be too pixelated, but this color of blue, I just, when the sun hits it, we're in a shadow now. When the sun hits it, it's just the most extraordinary blue color. Oh, look at that. Can you see on the bottom? You can see. Yeah, apparently the reason why we have such good 4G here is because there's like really big satellites uh, bringing in the signal from NTT. And I'm using Docomo to broadcast. SoftBank isn't good. I believe that's Minamijima, which is a protected island. You can see all the green on there. That's where the birds will mate. And uh, right now I see three birds, but you might not be able to because uh, I don't know if it's HD. If it was 4K, you'd be able to see the shadows of the birds. And there's some island, there's some rocks out there. The rocks make some really good diving because it's wall diving. All along the wall of the rock going down to the, the bottom is full of coral. And the coral means that there's lots of marine light that you can check out. It makes some really good diving and it's easy. It's easy to do a wall dive on a, on a rock like that. You see it in the middle? because you can't get lost. You just keep going around the rock. When you're done, is when you see something again, that means you're done. So this here is Ogasawara live from <laughs> a dive boat. It's still pretty insane that we have um, 4G signal out here. I think you can see up there is a 4G satellite, uh, one of the towers maybe, that's why. Up there on the mountain. But seriously, the 4G here is better than in Tokyo. It's like, it's like crazy good. I can't believe how good the, the 4G signal is. Yeah, maybe because I'm the only one using it. <laughs> That's probably true. Hey guys, have, has, have any of you have ever been scuba diving? Does anyone have a, a diver's license? Why don't you write in where the best place you've ever been scuba diving is and let me know uh, what some of the best dive sites are, what your dive, if you're a dive master, open water, advanced. You can write in the comments or just chat and then it'll stay in the record of this uh, video forever. It's kind of cool to see what everyone's experience is and where their favorite places to dive are, if there are any divers. Um, I, 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 to, when you do PADI, uh, which is the certification level for scuba diving, there's uh, open water, which is the beginning. There's open water, then there's, um, then there's an, uh, open water, advanced, rescue diver, and dive master. Or you can go uh, master scuba diver. 
which is the same, like almost the same as Dive Master. Dive Master is a professional. You can give people tours and stuff, take people on tours. A master scuba diver is just, can do everything. And uh, I took the professional route because you can make money with, with it. There's a rock. Uh, but I, yeah, it, it's actually the more licenses you take, the, the safer you feel when you go diving. So far I've been down to 40 meters uh, twice and it's just for a couple of seconds to take pictures of the aquatic life on the, on the ground there. All right, we're gonna be diving here. So we're gonna get ready now and I'm gonna say goodbye. When people start coming down, that means get, get ready. All right, so thanks for joining me. Thanks for the super chats. I'm gonna be using that towards uh, the shark lunch. So tune in at 3 p.m. Japan time, between three and four. All right, I, I'm not gonna make, I'm not gonna make a promise, but I will go and eat that shark burger for you. So I'll see you then. Okay, bye bye everybody. Enjoy the beautiful scenery of Ogasawara.